Hello and welcome! Tonight on the show, much like those scammers you get on the telephone trying to renew your car's warranty, we may have may have been sold a bad bill of goods here. We have our friend Patak and his Korma Curry Simmer Sauce in a jar. Boy, we are so excited to have you. This is Sauce Spoke. And we're back. We are Sauce Spoken. We're the podcast detailing your favorite sauces, dips, and condiments. My name's Adam, and I'll be your host, and I'm joining you this week by my co-host, Tori. Hello, sunshine, and happy days to you, my friend. This is Sauce Spoken, and my name is Tori. And to my right, <laughs> he is our favorite life form. Quite a hairy life form. In co-host form, believe it or not, here he is, our good friend. E. I'm not sure to say there's a lot of other hairier people out there than me, but all right. Well, that's true. <laughs> it's just the sleeveless. The sleeve oh. monster came by oh. and seen you last monster. night. Yes. Yeah, you are I knew you were going to make a comment about the <laughs> sleeves, the lack thereof. You are in a sleeveless shirt. It, it is sunny and it is hot, so. Popping the guns yeah. out, yeah. yeah. Oh, these saggy backwards, upside down biceps. Yeah. <laughs> Hit the bench upstairs, because brother. Yes, absolutely should be doing that. Group. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. And now so. it's time to catch up with the hosts. Time to catch up. I'm glad to be here on Sauce Web. <laughs> you are? You've never said that before in your entire life. That's not true. I've said it on other I episodes. Don't that, I don't know if you have. E. Let's fact check that. <laughs> roll it back. Another $5 bet. I should probably take you up on and probably won't. Roll it, roll it back. Wait. What was the last bet? the pictures that i put on the show notes of all the 14 ounce sauce pasta sauces that are at the oh, store i haven't seen the show notes because you uh, sent them when i was on my way here today on a thursday so yes. i haven't actually seen them yet <laughs> super late now hold on you found some in giant eagle um at shop and save you found 14 ounce ones at shop and save yeah a whole row i took a picture <laughs> in glass jars yep okay wow all right very good. A lot of controversy. Okay. It was. It was the hard, the elusive, magical, weird, odd size that really isn't that magical or weird. I'm going to fact check it. Yeah. I'll check it when I go there. I'll make sure. I, okay. You may very well be correct on this, and I will admit that I was wrong once I can actually see the show notes, which I would have seen by now if you would have sent them anywhere even remotely in the ballpark of on time. But <laughs> fair, to, fair to say. <laughs> but I know but historically, you have many a times thought you were correct on something, and you're like, well, I really showed Adam, and you were could not Dead have wrong. been more wrong. <laughs> so, on the one hand, I will say that this is totally possible that you are right, and I will admit next episode that I was wrong, but I'm going to reserve judgment about this, and we'll, we'll wait and see for this episode, so. That is fair. But, uh, what else you got going on this week, Eric? It hasn't been, it's been it's mm, weird, because we recorded last Friday the Mission Barbecue episode. Now we're back on our, our regular Thursday. Correct. So yeah, I had um I had a really good rest of my weekend. It was packed full of fun events. Um, what did I, what did I do exactly? I think I went on a packed full of fun events. Packed full of fun events. I can't I can remember. Almost yeah. remember what they were. <laughs> they were so fun and memorable. I think really hard. Just chocked full of the brim of laughter. Oh, that's right. I went kayaking on Saturday morning. Oh, that's right. You did go kayaking. I saw a green uh, heron, a blue heron, an osprey, uh, and a whole bunch of other fun wildlife bugs and frogs and maybe a turtle. I saw bubbles. I think there was a turtle down there, but it could have just been bubbles up from the bottom of the lake. Anyways, um, nice. yeah, it was fun. That was a really good time. I saw a guy on a what was this stupid thing called? It was a it was a, an electronic surfboard. Whoa! Yeah, electronic surfboard. Yep. He just hops on and the presses a button on like a cord that's attached, or actually, it might have been wireless. I don't know. But I think it probably had a cord. Presses the cord button, and he can go like I think he said thirty five miles per hour just on a little surfboard. Wow! With a motor. Wait, a surfboard? Yeah. Or a skateboard? Surfboard. In the Out water. Out there in the water. It was huh. bizarre. I'd never seen anything like it. Very cool. That is bizarre. I've never heard of anything like that. No, nah, never heard of nothing like that. Interesting, though. Um, yes, yeah, so that was really neat. And then Saturday night, I went to my friend's grandfather, grandmother's birthday party. It was super late because I was exhausted after kayaking. Took a nice, like, three-hour nap. Oh, yeah. Napping. Yeah. Nap. It was just too much sun. It just knocked me out. And then... Um, and then Sunday I worked, and after Sunday I went out and watched the Pens play at Southern Tier with Colleen. 
And then after the Pens lost to the Rangers, we hopped over to um, Shorty's Pints and Pins, and we uh, sat down in front of the fireplace and watched the lunar eclipse. Good shitty. Yeah, and sobered up. Tried to. Woo! Nice. What about you, Tori? Anything exciting going on with your week this week? I've been battling a head cold or allergies or something. So, yeah, mm. my, my week has been, believe it or not, even more boring than uh, than what they are any other week. Brutal. Yeah. That's yeah. terrible. But, I mean, it, it's not debilitating. I'm, I'm, mo- I'm mowing the grass and going to the gym and doing and going to work and doing all these things that I would do normally. Sure. But, uh, yeah, it's enough to maybe, maybe not affect my taste. I'm, we, we'll probably get into that a little bit later. But, uh, but yeah, it's enough to just be an annoyance. So, um, huh. yeah, I, I don't want to annoy you guys with it. You sound a little congested, but you honestly don't sound bad. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't... Saturday, I, I was whooped. On Saturday, I, I was whooped. Sunday was okay, a little bit better. And I've been getting progressively better since then. But it, now I'm, I'm sort of at a... This is where it sits for, for a day or two. So hopefully... Maybe I'm turning a corner. I don't know. Fingers crossed. Nice. Huh. Yeah, let's definitely hope so. Yeah. I just got a text from a person with an Atlanta zip code. Uh-oh. They said... Hello. Hot lamb. <laughs> hello. So I'm just curious to see if this person responds to me. I said, hello, who is this? Hmm. I'm thinking they might have... My phone number is... F- no, because that's not even right. So my hometown's phone number starts with... F- and this number is 470... F- I think that's weird. It's probably, I don't know, man. I wouldn't put too much thought into yeah, it. Yeah, it's probably spam, yeah. but like... You don't really get spam texts that get through. Like, I looked it up and it said, is a personal cell phone low risk of spam? Huh. So... Oh, weird. Hmm. Stay tuned for more. Yeah, the mystery texter. Well, when I was at Southern Tier, I uh, gave my number to a girl, Victoria. Really? That was her name. So, mm. what she look like? She's very, very pretty. Like what, out of my league, pretty. Like what? <laughs> like what length hair? Like what color length hair? I know a Victoria that might have been at Southern Tier. That's why I'm asking. Um, she had dark hair, like like really dark auburn hair. How and, long? Um, it was like. You know, just to the top of the shoulder blades or so. Like, you know, maybe she had it pulled up, pulled back. So if she... it was down, it might have been mid back. She said she worked downtown. What was she wearing? You remember? A black. Oh, that's got weird. It's like black and <laughs> top, like black and white top, kind of like a, like a low cut, almost like a, like a, it looked almost like the top of like a she dress. curvy? Yeah, she was a little curvy. All right, it probably wasn't this girl I'm thinking of then. Okay. Would describe her that. She's only quite been. describe her in the way you're, she just have auburn hair. That, so yeah, that doesn't quite. Jive with me. I don't think it's a person I was thinking of in any case. Oh, She's only shit. been in uh, Pittsburgh for the last like six months. She grew up in Pittsburgh, but she was previously in Oregon for the last three years. Oh, okay. So you chatted the chick up a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Colleen bought us all shots, her and her friend. Um, nice. I'm drawing a blank on her name right now, but... <laughs> but you got her number. I did not get her number. She got my... She asked for uh, my number. She asked for your number. She asked for my number. That's yeah. a good sign. Uh, if she straight what? up asked for your number, that is a very good sign, young man. It's, uh... I have not heard anything, so maybe it's not a good sign. I don't know. We'll it's see. It's a good... Maybe we were talking about breweries, so maybe next time she wants to go hit a brewery, she will Are you hit sure you up. didn't give her my number, and that's why that text just came through for me? <laughs> oh, fuck. Out of Atlanta? If it was Oregon, I might have said, oh, maybe. But no, she switched back to a PA number anyway. She was giving okay. me a hard time for my Ohio number. Well, yeah, why would you... Kind of like to our, our point about your sister with her whole Horizon debacle from the Mission Barbecue episode, like, why would you change your number... She thought it was like um. She thought it was weird. She's like, if you're if you're back in the in the in a local area, you should switch your number to a local number. She thought. Why? Yeah, I don't know. That's Just so to confuse people, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> like, first of all, clean slate. Not only like that, off. but you can know. get like a voiceover IP number that you d- you can just make your number, you know, essentially whatever you want. True. Yeah, I actually used to have a Google number that you could set up that way, but yeah, exactly. I you never used it, it to your phone. Right. I don't know why you'd go through that effort either, but you could. So it's doable. It'd be a lot easier than changing your entire number for no reason. Just because I moved. Just because you moved. Yeah, I moved. Every time I move, if I'm there for more than six months, new number. New number. New sorry. Life. Start new number. Go back to the yeah. Verizon store. Well, that's kind of like what Eric always talks about wanting to do is like moving out somewhere and just starting fresh, and he's just going to reinvent himself apparently. So well. Speaking of inventing things, so we're going to be talking about a little sauce this week, and this was a sauce that Eric went ahead and invented some dinner for us. Uh, but without further ado, why don't you lead us off with the sauce that we're going to be talking about tonight, Eric? Yeah, I'd be happy to. I actually saw this sauce brand of sauces at a Giant Eagle a couple of last time I had to buy sauces, and I uh, I was like, oh yeah, okay, we definitely want to do a curry. So we are doing patiks, no, patak, 
I don't know. How would you say that? I don't know. Patak? Pa- paddock. Paddocks? I don't think it's paddocks. <laughs> I think it's probably Patak or something like that. Patak's original korma curry. So, yeah. Uh, it's a simmer sauce. And, uh, you love to simmer. It's supposed, to, <laughs> supposed to simmer, simmer for 15 minutes. And, uh, yeah. You've been talking about simmer sauces for m- months now. <laughs> Probably. There, there's one that I really like that's actually at Aldi. But Why didn't you get that one? I didn't want to do another Aldi sauce. And I knew that, like, you know, you wanted to uh, venture out to other fair. brands. That's reasonable. So. Okay. I'll give you a pass on that. So, uh, yeah, we're giving this one a shot tonight. You did put more effort into the tasting articles than. We usually do. I know. I know this is a controversial take because I've staunchly been opposed to turning podcast into dinner night 2.0. And uh, I know sometimes you know you get a little, get a little carried away, Eric. So, but I think you made a you made us some some chicken and some rice to go with this, which I think is reasonable. I don't know if we needed the rice, but I think the chicken was at least the right move. Agreed. Thank you. I don't know. I thought the rice was. That jasmine, you know, I think it's, I think that's what they usually serve, like most Indian restaurants. And, yeah, no, I'm not saying uh, that it wasn't, uh, it, it was, it was inappropriate choice. I'm just saying that as far as tasting the sauce goes, I don't know that it was really adding a whole lot. I think it actually soaked up a lot of the sauce and kind of made it harder to taste. Harder to taste, maybe. Other than that, yeah, I thought it was a, it, it was, it does bear munching. I have to say this, I can't help myself, but the chicken that you were cooking was somehow. The whitest. It was the albino chicken. Chicken <laughs> I have ever seen cooked in my entire. You managed to cook an entire skillet of chicken without getting. It was white as a sheet. It was crazy. I white. actually thought I you were making tofu when I came in because it was so white. Yeah, it looked like tofu. That's how white as it was. It was kind of crazy. I have I, no uh, idea how you didn't get even one speckle of browning on any of those pieces of chicken. I kept how it covered probably for too long. I covered it. With Why did you cover it at all? And that's why I probably, that's where I probably went wrong. I yeah, you, you basically it. steamed it. That's why. You steamed us some fresh chicken. Steamed you fresh chicken. And then I <laughs> and then I took the lid off and tried to get it to brown, and it wouldn't brown. So I was just like, all right, attack with it. That, mm-hmm. By that point, we were so late. We were like, pour in the sauce and let it simmer. Who cares if it doesn't have color? You had it Heat-resistant chicken. <laughs> you, had it, you had it in a white skillet, too. So it just looked like a, 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 white, a white thing. Mozzarella cheese. Yeah, kind of like melting mozzarella cheese in there. It was whiter than mozzarella cheese somehow. <laughs> it was strange. I should have taken a picture of the whole uh, in-process shot so we could put it up on uh, Instagram. Or something like I, I mean, it was the chicken itself wasn't bad. It was tender and tasty, uh, and it was a good medium, a nice bland medium for the sauce. I will say that. I do think that, and well, this is getting into tasting notes, I don't want to skip around too much, but I do think that this is something that would not be, maybe be better the next day after it's really had a chance to marinate in there, but true. without any further ado, um, Tor, do you want to go ahead and give us a little visual description of the outside of the container that we're looking at here tonight, and I'll do the inside? I would love to. Be my guest. I will. I'll, I will be. Also, be my host. Your guest. And I think I will. So what we have here is our friend... Patak. P- <laughs> Whatever you feel in your heart. <laughs> I can't even say it. I don't know. Patak. Oh, P- this is actually interesting because this goes back to I looked up. Do you remember the other, the other day when we were trying the Del Grosso sauce? There was a lot of hot debate, which is going to tie into this too because we're not going to know how to say this either. There was a lot of hot debate about how you're actually supposed to say Del Grosso. And I... Attempted to look it up. I looked at a couple different pronunciations for it based on like people's last names that are Italian, which is I'm assuming what they were going for. I don't know if the company I don't think is Italian. It's based in Pennsylvania, right? We learned that. So yeah, maybe. but it was like a hundred years ago when they immigrated to this country. Yeah, it's an old company. Remember? Okay, maybe I mean, we're gonna give him a pass there. But it turns out that you're almost. I think what I settled on is you're almost supposed to say it because I know you were saying. Del Grosso, Gross, yeah. which I think yeah. sounded better than Del Grosso, which is what I was saying. Sure. But I think the truth lies somewhere in the middle, actually. I think we were both kind of right and kind of wrong. Like, I think you're supposed to say it like Del Grosso. Like, you're supposed to say it with an O-A, like O-A. Oh, oh wow. O-A. And it's kind of like subtle, but everything I listened to, it was like kind of halfway in between what we were saying. Like, it's not Del Grosso, and it's not Del Grosso, it's Del Grosso. Interesting. Ain't that something? Yeah. You know, they have an amusement park yes. out in Tipton, PA. I saw that on oh. their website. Yeah. What's the amusement park? Del Grosso Park. Oh, really? Del, Del, Gra- Del, Del Grosso. Yeah, that's Del it. Grosso. Yeah, park. <laughs> I guess it's like a water, like they have roller coasters and water slides and wow. it's pretty fun. Yeah. That's wild. Mm-hmm. That's a, Yeah. <laughs> 
Interesting. Well, uh, that was just my little brief soft spoken right, rewind tidbit there. That that's what I learned. That's what it seems like. Fuck, I could still be wrong. I don't know how they say it, but uh, that's how it seemed like it is supposed to be said. But hmm. and I think we're going to face similar issues with this sauce tonight. There's no question. Call it whatever you want. <laughs> I yeah. don't know, and I, I may or may not even look this one up. So ah, well, I'm going to go with patak because I I trained my brain within that little that little monologue. Like you had an there. attack with a p. Patak. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to patak you. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> I'm going to whip this bottle at your head and patak you with it. <laughs> so here we have yet another rare sized bottle. E is finding all of these, all of these super rare items. This is a 15 ounce jar Uh-oh. worth of korma curry. And I've never it, seen a 15 ounce jar. We got to fit you <laughs> right, right in front of your face, my man. So we have, uh, it's like a royal purple lid. I really like this color purple. It says pay tax on their pay tax, whatever, on their twice. Has the click we like, of course, for... It says pay your tax. He's trying to send you a money. <laughs> trying to send you a sign. Oh, the whole darn label is purple. Uh, the first quarter of it is a lighter purple, and it has this sort of paisley uh, type design in there, which I guess is Indian. I, I, I don't know. Paisley, that particular pattern, that's an Indian thing. Don't ask me. Yeah, you got me. I have no idea. But in the corner there, it's those henna tattoos and whatnot, like all those, like, all the, the ink, yeah. the, like, spiraling designs. I I've think that's very, that. yeah. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, Indian. I suppose you're right. Then, uh, you have pay tax, patax, and a diamond shape, and it's his original, and there's the apostrophe, so it belongs to our boy patak. And it was established back in 19... 19- I like how you said it four different ways. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Cover yeah. your bases. Yeah, I'm going to co- do the that's same. That's right. We're not going to confuse everybody. We have Korma Curry, and this is a, a simmer sauce, which we know uh, that it's one of one of E's favorites. On the bottom right-hand corner, there's a dish that looks very, very similar to the dish we had. A little bit of rice, so it appears to be a little bit of chicken. This uh, maybe has uh, some pita bread or, or something on the side there. There's your dish. I can get this little blurb in there, too. I'm feeling awful wordy tonight. Night. Sure. Since 1958, our goal has been to provide you with truly authentic Indian flavors that are both easy to make and deliciously enjoyed. Using family recipes passed down for generations, Patax lets you enjoy traditional Italian dishes right at your home table any day of the week. So there is you go. Is that Italian or is that Indian? Indian. Okay. I know. I, 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 I slipped there. <laughs> I know. We were just talking about the Del Grosso. The Del Grosso. And yeah. So there's a, there's a little recipe on the back. And then, of course, there's E's section, which I will... Oh, what does it say underneath the summer sauce? I won't even... Pa- uh, oh, creamy coconut and spices. Wow. Oh, and it's, it's of the mild variety down there in blue. And of course, no artificial colors or flavors. It's gluten-free, thank goodness. And it's also vegetarian, which I would be alarmed if it wasn't. Very good, Tori. Very oh, good. I thank you. Yeah, there's no hidden meat in this sauce, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think makes sense because a lot of Indian food is vegetarian, you know? Oh, right. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, uh, now we're going to move on to the inside of the container. What's uh, the sauce inside the bottle there? So, and this is, um, um I'm going to read this off to us here, and it's weird. It doesn't look good at all inside. It definitely is like a very, like, chunky. It's got, like, white and looks like green chunks, and it is a hail orange color almost akin to like a buffalo chicken dip color i would say yeah i was thinking that too or like nacho cheese yeah nacho, yeah, yeah exactly it's more like a yellow okra it's, it's yeah yellow. so it's kind of like a browner muddier nacho cheese almost but it's definitely got like some spices in it it's got what look like some brown flecks in it and it's got some like i said curious white lumps in it and uh some green flecks that look like i don't know maybe like a little parsley type thing and other than that, yeah, not a lot to say about it pre-cooking. And once, you know, once you actually do cook it, post-cooking, it does, I think, liven it up slightly. It's still not like, uh, it's not something that is winning you over on its appeal based on its looks. I will say that. Like, I do think it goes better once it's on something to kind of, like, hide how weird and lumpy the sauce is. But <laughs> it does seem to, like, have a little bit of, like, oil separation coming out of it. I don't know if that's from the sauce or the chicken. That's from heating. Well, I think it's from that's the from sauce. from heating? Okay. I tried to remove any of the excess because I'd use two tablespoons of oil to cook the chicken. And then I tried to scrape out as much of the oil as I could. And then when I put in that sauce, I noticed, yeah, that, like, oily separation. It definitely came from the sauce, I would say. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, uh, it, it does kind of like cook down and render a little bit, and it still looks kind of weird and lumpy, but it looks far more normal than it does in the jar. It looks and it looks more like a brighter orange color. It looks much more appetizing. Yes. But yeah, it's uh, and it's not super runny. Like it does definitely stick to the side of the plate. It would not pass the blizzard test in the jar by far, but just a little dollop on the plate, 
you might drip a little bit of oil, but I think other than that, it would pretty much pass the blizzard test. I would call it like a medium weight sauce. Sounds fair. I think that's fair. They eat medium weight. Now, like I said, we did try this on some chicken with rice, and it, the downside of that is it did kind of like soak into the chicken, but also more so into the rice. So it was really hard to get the sauce on its own to try it. But despite that, we're going to do our best attempt to move on to the initial tasting notes. I, I do think it bears mentioning, we, we should touch on this before we get into the initial tasting notes, because I think it's going to be very clear where our feelings lie quickly on this. But have you guys had a lot of experience previously with curries? I've Negative. had a fair bit. You've never had a curry before? Never had a curry before. Oh. No, this is my first time. In fact, I actively avoided Indian food. Yeah, which I think you would actually like quite a bit of different Indian foods. I think uh, you would you do have to like oh. definitely get the right stuff, though, too, which is... You have to really have like a guide. It's not clear from the menu like what anything is. True. Yeah, it's pretty intimidating. And I don't know. There's enough stuff that I know I like, and I would rather not gamble. They have good, like seafood dishes in Indian cuisine with, like, shrimp and scallops in it. Ooh. That's not bad. Now time. you're talking. That's my shit. Especially if you do get, like, a mango, like you were saying earlier, like a mango curry or something like that, with something like that, it can be pretty good. Huh. Right. Um, I have ha- I've definitely had curry in many different varieties before. This one was okay, as far as that goes. Uh, I don't think this is, like, the most, like, quintessential version of a curry. That's the only thing I would say about it, but... Um, and you have had curry before, too, Eric, you said, right? Sure, yeah, yeah, several times. All right, yeah, I, I definitely have had it. More, I would say, more Thai curries, which are a little bit of a different animal than Indian curries, which mm, I do sure. like better, but... I do, too. <laughs> with, all that, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get on to our initial tasting notes, and uh, I'm curious to hear it from the novice first. Why don't you lead us off, Tori, with what you're detecting there? Well, boys, I think this is going to be a really short segment. Because I tasted, and I, I, this this could be a function of this little congestion I have going on here, but I tasted nothing. And I know this doesn't make for good programming, but I, I was searching actively for something. I didn't get any salt. I didn't get any pepper. I didn't get any citrus. I didn't get any sweet or earth. I mean, I got nothing. I mean, I, I, I wish there was an adjective that I could assign this to. Maybe you do have COVID. <laughs> Straight up baby food. <laughs> or tasteless baby food. I had sure a, you ate other stuff today that you could I had taste. a delicious ham sandwich and a protein shake before I came over here, yeah. and that was fine. Yeah. Um, Spoiler alert, I don't think you're wrong on this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you what. Why don't you guys take one of your turns, and I'm going to give it one last nibble here, one, right. one, one last ditch effort, pull anything I can out of this, um, but I'm, I'm struggling. I'm looking for more adjectives to find what it misses rather than what it hits on. So, I mean, that, there's something yeah. for you. This is always the tricky thing we have with sauces that are prepared, too, because the question always arises of whether or not we tried it like accurately. And I think we definitely nailed the preparation. My only qualm about this preparation is that he nailed the preparation, not we. <laughs> he nailed the preparation. Correct. Eric, the food chef, nailed the preparation. He will be providing the recipes at the end of this show. Which is chicken and rice. Chicken so. and rice, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Eric, the cook, nailed it. And the the thing about it is, on the chicken and rice, it's fine. It's too mild for me, which is kind of like where it comes in. I, like t- Curries are like notoriously anything but mild. Should be, I would imagine, yeah. And so I think to have something that even if it is labeled mild, you know, you would be thinking like, okay, mild for Indian food is really not mild, you know. This really is, it, especially on, even with bland, unseasoned chicken and bland, unseasoned rice, like, the flavor gets washed out very, very quickly, which I think is one of the things that's affecting you, Tori, is that I think you only tried it on the chicken and rice, right? That's it. So, I tried, I actually got a little bit more out of the out of the dish that had been sautéed, and I put it on my, on a separate plate, so I could try some of the prepared cooked sauce, because we, we kind of decided it would, probably wouldn't be great straight out of the jar, I don't think. You do get a little bit more of it just trying it straight up on its on a plate, but it is subtle. One thing I definitely get out of it is I get the sweetness of the coconut milk and a little bit of the coconut flavoring. That's very obvious and prevalent, which has a cooling effect on curries. And I think that's what the lumps are, although I've never seen coconut milk lump up like that before, so I thought that was a little strange. I do think there is some earthiness to it, maybe like some cinnamon, some nutmeg type notes, and a little bit of like, almost like a garlicky note. It is very subtle though, and it, like I said, the sauce does have a little bit of like a ch- crunch chunk on its own. It's not bad, 
But it, it's far too subtle both for a curry in general and for even as mild a preparation as this. And that was my really my main detraction about it. But what about you, Eric? Yeah, I have to pretty much 100% agree with you. I mean, this is an extremely mild curry. I've never had anything this, yeah, subtle. Um, it has actual strips of shredded dried coconut in it, which I was able to extrapolate illegal. one. Illegal. Not artificial, mind you. That's not a thing. Not an artificial. Yeah. <laughs> no artificial coconut. You know the fake artificial coconut that they sell in bags at the grocery store all over the place. <laughs> Which That's I hate. Fake. I hate that stuff. That's so. all wax. <laughs> um, yeah, it had a very odd like. They shred out. They shred up birthday candles for that. <laughs> <laughs> it had a weird uh, mouth feel to it because of that shreddedness. Like I, I was chewing and like you could. You think that's you, what the white chunks are? Bite through. Well, I don't know. I was able to extrapolate like an actual like. You do a lot of extrapolation over there. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I fear through. that you're not that good of an extrapolator. So <laughs> extrapolation. It obviously has yellow curry in it. Yellow curry powder. Yes. Um, Does it have to? I think that's what makes it a curry. That's yeah. What, okay. Yeah. yeah, I think that like. But there's also red curry powder and yellow curry powder. Are you get mango curry? curry so there's, there's curry ma- paste. Yeah. yeah. That usually there's like some sort of a base when you're making a curry, and it's usually either a powder or a paste. Oh. And then you put the other ingredients into that, and that's what kind of gives it like. That, like, earthy yellow stuff that you're getting is the curry powder from this. Huh. Yeah. Which normally has a bit of a stronger, like, earthier flavor on its own. And even some heat, some spice. And this just had zero, zero heat. I mean, we don't, I don't, I don't think we even need to do any no. level. Oh, absolutely no, absolutely not. not no. Um, it's barely going to get a taste level. <laughs> <laughs> taste, yeah. taste rating NA. <laughs> Wet. Yeah. It was able to definitely Yellow. taste the sweetness, like Adam was saying, from the coconut and coconut milk that are obviously inside it. Um, and yeah, maybe cinnamon, maybe turmeric. Just because of the color, my mind is thinking turmeric, wishing turmeric. Yeah, it bears <laughs> mentioning that, like, we said curry powder, like, there's a curry tree that you go grind it from. You know, curry I, powder, I believe, is just other ground-up spices together, and I think that yellow typically does have quite a bit of tamarind in it, as you're fond of saying. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. It was a tamarind supposed to be? Tarmarind. <laughs> and tu- turmeric. Tarmarind and turmeric. <laughs> Throw some extra vowels that aren't supposed to but be. But yeah, in the, the yellow, <laughs> the yellow in particular is a, is like a big thing with the turmeric food. I mean, it's essentially a food color. We've talked about that before too, with like paprika. You know, where it does tend to lend color before it lends flavor. Right. Turmeric is very much the same way. It's very subtle, and if you put a shitload of it, then it does have kind of a weird flavor. But it's more like a flavor amplifier. Ooh, we it's like those. Health we do. We, do. So, we like those around here. Turmeric and Tori being a first time eater of. Uh, Indian food. I don't know if Adam was warned the first time he ever had Indian food. Now that you didn't try much, you only had a couple bites, I think it would be safe, but uh, for whatever reason, those particular spices, the first time you ever you know, like encounter them, they run through you. Oh, so be prepared. <laughs> oh. Um, okay. That's definitely a thing. You, didn't, you don't, you don't no, remember that the I first time you, so. had, you shit your brains out the first shit, time you eat a oh, curry? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, okay, you, I don't oh, wow. think... Well, let's fact true. check that. I, okay. We'll have to fact check that too, I guess. I yeah. do think like the, there's like a stereotype of like people eating certain foods and like shitting their brains out. I don't think you become like inoculated to the spice after one. T- oh, it's not even after once. No, yeah. This so isn't like, like Dune, you know? Yeah, like I hadn't had curry in a long time and then I, I made eggplant curry for actually for Colleen a couple years ago. And it was nice, it was spicy, it was good, but yeah, that ran through me <laughs> because I just of all the spices that, in there. I sus- mm. Mm, yeah, well. we'll fact check that. I don't. <laughs> I don't think it's the spices. I think it might be more likely that you had a lot of fiber from the eggplant or something like that that was running through you. Maybe. And you're normally used to eating a cold baked potato with bacon bits for dinner. I think that's probably more likely. That so. is very true. <laughs> <laughs> even even this that you made here tonight, which I think is a perfectly reasonable meal for someone to make for themselves, but there's not a whole lot of greenery or fiber, go, fiber going on in this. So True. Plain white processed rice and the blandest, mildest, whitest chicken you've ever seen before in your entire life. <laughs> you ever see like those chickens running around on a farm? They've got like the white feathers. You made it whiter than that somehow, like whiter than with the feathers on. I don't know how you did that. It's extra white chicken, steamed chicken, whiter on the inside than it is on the outside. So was that? Was that pretty much it capture it for your tasting notes, Eric? Yeah, I think. I mean, yeah, like you said, subtle sweetness, a very bit of earthiness, a little. Bit um, but very, I mean, yeah, the coconut, and that's and that's about it. Yeah, it's just an exceedingly mild curry. I almost feel like we should try curries again, 
I know yes. I've been really making a push lately for us to try different things, but I feel like we're almost not quite doing this curry justice. And I think it'd be more interesting to try, try like a Thai curry because, you know, Thai food, it, Indian is too, but Thai particularly is known for having a very high heat level. True. And I feel like if we did like some shrimpies or something like that in a Thai curry, Ooh, it'd be pretty good. I'd be good. balanced out though, which is neat because like, you have that like usually that, like milk or, you know, coconut you know, milk, yeah, coconut times, milk yeah. that's in the curry. So then you add those hot notes to it and it's like hot and mellow at the same time and creamy it's good i will say i don't i don't need this much of a texture from a curry either Uh, the texture i think is weird it's weird some of the chunks are hard to identify and i don't i don't like that as much i don't like i like them when they're more of like a pureed smoother texture which i think most curries are this is like i don't know like i mean this this is a little thicker though too which i do like the thickness of this i will say i just don't like the texture they advertised as a coconut curry and i thought well tori likes coconut which i don't care for coconut so i specifically bought it for him oh i love coconut and i'm disappointed by it because it's coconut is one of those things where i can kind of take it or leave it like you said like i don't really need the coconut in anything like i'm not one of those people that's offended by it but like if you're if the option is to have it or not have it i don't need it you know, I'm just hmm. as soon have it without. What about like in an almond joy? You can't have I an like almond, almond joy. Oh, it's F fine. you then. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. Uh, Doesn't do much for me. It's like yeah. drinking coconut water. Why? Red uh, water's better. <laughs> well, you had an argument there, but I don't know. Like a coconut crawler, bro. Get me a cup of coffee and a coconut crawler. Oh, mama. I don't know, man. Eating that coconut stuff is kind of just like eating like sweet toenails. Or a ma- me, like, oh, <laughs> <out here. laughs> Like, it's fine. How about I mean, a mallow cup? They have coconut? Yeah, they're okay. Hmm? I'm not a big coconut. I've never had not, a mallow cup before. Like, anything that... I Like, I don't dislike coconut, but I feel like almost anything that has coconut in it would probably be slightly better if it didn't have coconut. I do like the flavor of coconut, though, especially in a curry. I mm. thought mallow cups were marshmallow. Marshmallow yeah, with do. a little bit of coconut. Yeah, they do have coconut huh. in them. Yeah. How about that? I didn't even know that. Come on, Eric. I mean, it's in the name mallow cup, but yeah, there is a little bit of coconut. I like cooking popcorn with coconut oil. I think that makes for really tasty popcorn, oddly enough. Hmm. There was a big push years back for like people to use coconut oil for everything. I, I remember that. Amy yes. was on that. And I don't know why, because it's it's actually quite unsustainable. Like It's not a good like choice to make if you care about the environment at all. If you don't give a shit about the environment, it's still kind of like... I really don't get the appeal. You know, People were rubbing it all over their faces and their hair and putting it in their... They get one big tub, take it in the bathroom with them, you know, take it out and slop some on the saute. And like, I don't want my shit to taste like coconut, you know? Yeah. They said it was so good for like your hair and your nails and like had like high vitamin E or something like that. And they're trying to say it was like the healthiest of oils. And then they like realized, no, it's really not the healthiest of oils. Yeah, it's it's still oil. Like it's still high in calories and it does pretty much the same thing. And if you if you drink a lot of olive oil, your hair and skin are going to look pretty good too. But it doesn't mean it's good for oh, you yeah. necessarily like, <laughs> it's good for my hair and skin right. yeah like you'll have very shiny luxurious hair but like you know a, a, a tablespoon of oil has like 500 calories in it so you know take that for what it's worth plan accordingly <laughs> yeah exactly but speaking of what's in things it's time for eric's favorite segment of the show <laughs> the <laughs> ingredients break this down figure out exactly what is going break it on down. Break it down like the mm, white boy in the yard. Huh. Town. Tori, you think you can guess the first ingredient? Mm. Water. Soybean oil. Coconut. Water. water. Oh, water. <laughs> <laughs> this tasteless sauce starts with water. First, second, and third ingredients are water. <laughs> Followed by sugar, desiccated coconut. That's the, what that stuff's called. Desiccated. <laughs> the desiccated husks of coconut. <laughs> Cream, coconut paste, uh. onion, Canola oil, food starch, uh, food. Wait, that's weird. It says food? food starch modified. That's a weird way of listing it. Contains two percent or less of tomato paste, heavy cream. Probably should take some lactate pills with this. Ginger, garlic. Less than two percent. Yes, like most other sauces, they all say that. Uh, so ginger, garlic, spices, including. Tarmeric. Turmeric. Tarmeric. Tarmeric. <laughs> Tarmeric. Even reading it, I just... Heck, I How do you do that? You gotta throw that R in there. Salt. Salt. There's not an A either. It's, it's not the tarmeric. A. Yeah. No, it's turmeric. It has a U in it. I put the... I put, I put <laughs> an A in Tarmeric. Turmeric. Salt. Why? <laughs> Tarmeric. Tarmeric. <laughs> Lactic acid. Lemon juice. Concentrate. Uh, dried cilantro leaf. Contains milk. Coconut. Cilantro. 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 Product. Cilantro. 
That's you didn't right. say it like that the first time. Oh, Salandro Sal- Lee. Salandro Lee. <laughs> Salandro. Carcini- well, what's that? Lando. What? Lando Calrissian. Yeah, thank from you. Star Wars. There you go. Disney's going to sue us now. We're going to have another copyright infringement on That's our right. account. Oh boy. Product of the United Kingdom. Whichever one of you train. fucks has been fraudulently putting copyright things on our <laughs> YouTube videos can fuck right off. We bought that shit fair and square. We've licensed that music for our intro. Stop fucking laying your copyright shit down. Yeah. That shit's whack. We gotta call our lawyers. Not approved by Slaw Spoken. If Not you're going to copyright us, then copyright us for saying that Bark's Root Beer is supporting our show. Actually, don't do that, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big supporter of Bark's Root Beer, and I hope that, that wouldn't reflect negatively on that, but, you know... So be it. He's a big supporter of a soda pop. This may contain Barks. traces of Barks. peanut, almond, it's good. and cashews. All it's right. good since 1898. Barks has bite. Barks is good? Since 1898. I like all root beers. I don't know. I don't know if I have a favorite. Oh, Barks is my favorite. Barks is so much better than other root beers. And the other thing, too, is that it is like the key element in a root beer float. Because mm. some of the other root beers try to be like smooth and creamy and ultra sweet, you know. So Barks Muggs is like is really none sweet. of that shit. Yeah, Muggs is really sweet. And A and W is the same. Barks though, Barks has bite, and that's the perfect thing to go with a nice hearty scoop of vanilla ice cream, especially like a French vanilla. It's already got a little bit of that creaminess going on. The Barks is a beautiful contrast to that, and it doesn't go all the same thing we've saying said before the the monotone of whatever food is. So several months ago, I was I was really contemplating buying you some Australian root beer from Amazon, but the shit was like crazy expensive to get in, and I just ended up abandoning the whole idea but There's, i do think it'd be interesting because i guess their their root beer is extremely syrupy bitey not like american root beers i don't, huh. I don't like soft drinks from a fountain either i don't like fountain drinks at all Ugh. they get too like they put too much syrup in them they're too sweet they lack that like crisp refreshing bite that you get out of a can that's why i gotta have that barks barks has bite and that's what i like well, it's good since 1898. Dude, I'm down with fountain beverages. Hook me up with a fountain bev any yeah, day of the week. Fountains are, fountain beverages are whack. Nah. So yeah. nothing really jumped out at me or surprised me about those ingredients. That seemed pretty, I don't know, standard, right? Yeah, very standard. I, the, I thought it was interesting how high onion was because um, I just didn't... Maybe that was the chewy bits I was getting. I don't think it was onion, though. I think it was definitely the coconut. And honestly, I didn't taste onion. I didn't <gasps> even... <laughs> Jeez, you all right? That's how you breathe every time. <laughs> I just think it's funny. <gasps> so, so what is korma? K O R M A. Korma deviled eggs, chicken korma. We're seeing that a lot. This well, that's like, the name of the sauce. This that's is, a korma this curry. But korma. what is it like? Is it an ingredient or a, is it a process? Have What's to that mean? Translate probably from India, Indian to. US. Translate from India. Translate from India. Uh, apparently, korma is the name of the dish, which traditionally has meat, vegetables, and the sauce. Oh. So, and a curry sauce. So it's not necessarily a curry. It's a korma? Korma is the meal that you would make with this sauce. Oh. Okay. Huh. It'd be like the same thing as like stir fry sauce. You're going to make stir fry the dish. But stir fry is also what you're doing to the dish. Yes. In our language. <laughs> right. Yes. That's correct. So how is how does that relate here? Do you korma a dish? Is that is that what you do? No. no. But it's just the name I'm saying of like the dish. it would be the name of the dish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or it'd be like if it's the same thing of like general so's sauce, you know, that would be the name of the dish. That, that's a better if that fits better for you. Okay. Because that... you don't general so's the chicken. No, you don't. <laughs> No, maybe, maybe one does. Don't. I don't know. I he personally, I would, personally do not general sow the chicken. He may general sow other livestock. Maybe other not chicken. Livestock. <laughs> I could you, general sow. It's uh, like the saying goes: shrimp. you general sow what you admiral reap. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, they've got some recipes on their website here for chicken korma, the name of the dish, chickpea and butternut squash curry, korma deviled eggs, which sounds whack as fuck, and creamy coconut curried vegetables. So. You know, the exact, aside from the eggs, basically the exact thing you would think of to do with curry, I guess. So, the eggs don't sound good to me at all. That sounds weird. But they have a whole lineup of sauces, too. Like, this is just this one particular sauce. They do. I couldn't imagine anything more boring than deviled eggs. What a waste of deviled eggs. They have simmer sauces, meal kits, veggie meals, chutneys, pickles, and curry spice pastes. I don't think we need to go through all these because I suspect that there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. So we don't we don't necessarily need to do this, even for the simmer sauces. But they have a lot of different 
Oh, this is one all of my, the things we've rapid fired is, done before. This is like, oh, there's nine of these. Oh, too oh, it's just too many. Okay, too we'll, many. Do, we'll, do the rapid, we'll do the rapid fire. I oh yeah. Brief mention here. They have one is called Rogan Josh Curry Sauce, which I've seen as a dish in Indian places before. I never know what that's supposed to mean, but I always think it's funny because you have you see aside from vindaloos and tandoori's, you see Rogan Josh. Yeah, that's weird. And I always think of Joe Rogan, so then I start thinking this is like Joe Rogan's signature Indian sauce, and I don't know what Rush, what I don't know what that word Rogan Josh means in this context, and I'm not going to find out. We'll find out in the show notes if we ever do them again. So uh, let's do a rapid fire style. Tori, you want to lead us off? Mild curry sauce. Eric, butter chicken curry sauce. Tori, Dopai's uh, curry sauce. Eric, how freezy? This is going to be a fun one. Curry sauce. I'm glad we did this. <laughs> Tori. Oh, we got our fave, the Korma Curry. Eric. Mango curry sauce. Tori. Call it your boy Joe Rogan curry sauce. Spicy Eric. butter chicken curry sauce. I Tori. can do that. Oh, we got another wild one. Spicy Alfrez curry. Eric. And then we got a spicy uh, tikka masala curry. <laughs> Ma- masala. I'm yeah. glad we did this, Tori. Oh, yeah. I'm going to cheat because you said it once already. Spicy yeah. Vindaloo curry. Eric. And then just regular tiki masala. Tiki. <laughs> tikka, tikka masala? I think I it's tikka masala. Tikka masala curry sauce. And then Tori. And the caboose, we got tandoori. Nice. I'm glad we decided to read all those. That's yeah, fun. That I don't was think fun. we pronounced, aside from butter chicken, I don't think we pronounced a single correct one of those correctly. So You didn't think we got our, our, our one of the entire episode, the whole korma? I'm, all not, wrong? I'm still not even confident we've even saying the brand name correctly. So oh, I'm not going to, okay. I'm definitely not going to say we're saying anything the rest of this correctly. <laughs> I, I, my gut is saying Patak. No, oh, Patrick. Yeah, well, it's his Patrick. This is Patrick's sauce. <laughs> this is Patrick's sauce. We'll talk. Okay. But um, without any further ado, I think it's time for us to get on to the ratings portion of the show. Hmm. I don't know who to go first. Eric, do you want to go first? Sure, I'll go first. Go ahead, okay. This sauce was quite a bit of a miss. Uh, I regret buying it. Uh, I think it deserves a two and a half, which is sad because I generally like curries, but this is not something I'll ever buy again. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's hard for me because I'm trying to think what you could make with this. Like, it would be fine if you had individually seasoned all the components, which I do think that, like, Indian food is heavy on the seasoning. So I think that maybe that's what they're doing. And this is just kind of like holding it together. That being said, it's not one of my favorites even from that aspect because it's got kind of weird texture on it. The appearance is weird. Uh, I don't really need the coconut, like, chunk in there. So, mm, yeah, even if you did throw it together with something a little bit more competent, uh, I would still think it'd be coming pretty low. I think I'm going to say a three. Ooh. What about you, Tor? Wow. Well, I was expecting a lot from a curry. I I, mean, I don't know a lot about an Indian food, obviously, but I know enough about Indian food to know that it was all those things that you mentioned. It's spicy. It'll a lot of times give you a slap in the mouth. It's different, um, certainly than what I'm used to. So I had high, a lot of high expectations for, for this, and I was, honest to goodness, I was expecting to like it. Couldn't have been more off base there. Um, I was going to give it a zero, but by virtue of my cold, I feel that I may not be experiencing what is there with this congestion that I have. So it's going to get bumped. I'm going to give it that grace and give it uno. Uno. The cheese stands alone. Wow. It's the loneliest number. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's all very fair. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. it didn't really do a whole lot for me. Um, it's weird because it's also not bad, you know? No, it's not bad. I would say that it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just not a whole lot going on there. Yeah, it's just sort of bland. The, the, the flavors, lack of something going on is bad. The flavors, <laughs> yeah. The fla- yeah, Well, yes. In this instance, I think you would be disappointed. Certainly, the flavors that I can taste when I actually do try it on the toothpick, when I can get them up in my mouth, aren't bad at all. Actually, they're kind of pleasant. It's just so hard to get anything out of it. So, attack! What are you doing? You've been spending too much time stateside. Get back over there with the palm trees and the Ganges and uh, spice up your your chromin sauce. So what the hell is this called again? It's not chromin. I know. Korma. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, one of those extrapolated, desiccated uh, on the side there. Oh, very nicey. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> coconut. Uh, <laughs> coconut shred. It's clearly visible in there. It's I feel really like weird. this would have been really good with like some peas or something like that in it, you know, or some some carrot or something. I don't know. Something to liven up a little bit. I'm sure some vegetables would have helped. And yeah. I thought about making some vegetables too, but then I really would have heard about Adam how I'm um, turning this into, you know, dinner night, so. 
Yeah, I mean, it definitely didn't need it. Like I said, we didn't even need <laughs> the rice to begin with, but I understand you got to cook yourself dinner here. You you got to, so. I thought it would shine maybe better on the rice how than many meals, on the chicken or something. But. Let me ask you this. How many more meals are you going to make out of this sauce? You have a fair amount left. I only have enough. I mean, I used over half the jar, so, I mean, there's only one more meal to do something with, but I don't know what. Yeah, maybe you're try to try to amp shrimp. this up somehow. I know you're going to. Yeah, I got a little Ooh, bit of that yeah. yellow um, sriracha sauce still in the fridge. So we wait. How old? Sing it up. The yellow when we back back when we oh, did dude, the yellow that was mountain like episode sriracha. eleven, bro. Yeah, it was the ways. Like two years ago. <laughs> Probably toxic by now. That should help. Give it some flavor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I would just like throw some, you know, red pepper flake or something like that in there if you want to do that. And I got red pepper flake too. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be the route I would go a lot sooner than I would go trying to add that weird ass yellow sriracha. sriracha in there, which I also didn't like. So yeah, it was like a real citrusy sriracha. It was really. Well, that different. we've gotten away from srirachas too as a thing because not my favorite. So yeah. Interestingly enough, I bet you, I, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put any money against it, but I bet. I would be willing. I'd be surprised if the um, Thai curries didn't have sriracha in them. Mm, yeah, I don't think they. Well, this one doesn't have sriracha in it either, does it? This is this is not a Thai curry. Yeah, I know. Are I'm you saying, saying you think they? I do would have be. Them? Yeah, I'd be surprised that if oh, they did the not. The way you phrased <laughs> that, I thought seemed odd because you made it sound like you said they didn't have it. Okay. No. Yeah. They definitely. I, saying, I would imagine they would. Thai I curry sauces probably have. Think they have sriracha in them. I, I could be totally off base. Like I said, I wouldn't put money against it, but I'd be surprised. I, I use like they, sriracha a lot. Over they can time. serve them like with sriracha, but I, I don't like sriracha in any form. I do like Thai food. So, huh? But all that being said, Eric, closing thoughts. Definitely not dating closing, advice. You have any? Yeah. <laughs> no recipes this you week. You did get a girl's not you all. I you did. got a girl to ask you for her number, which I think is considerably the harder feat. It was super weird, though. I mean, I almost feel like I should have asked for her number back or been like, hey, send me a she text. She should text you. Yeah. But I would think that she would have texted you like right then. I would have too. I was surprised. Tell me more about this interaction. I want to hear more. Tell me more about Victoria. Uh, so, Colleen was first hitting on her the whole, the, throughout the most of the night. Is this girl receptive to this? Uh, mildly. But she kept looking at me and every time Colleen would go up to use the restroom, I would hop over and chat her up and then Colleen would come back and like, hey, get out of my seat. <laughs> so, I was just talking to her up because it was friendly and wanted to know more about okay. her. And what I is mean, this chick's deal? What's her deal? What's uh, her deal? She was watching the Pens game with us. Yeah. And then we lost. But you said you were talking to her. You didn't learn anything about her in that whole time? No, I learned that, like That's said, part she, of her deal, E. She worked downtown. What do you mean, her deal? Mm. Uh. She recently broke up with her boyfriend, sort of, and that's what, uh, why she moved back to Pittsburgh. Uh, all right. Okay, so you know for a fact that she's single, too. That's, I know for a fact that she's single. That girls don't say that kind of thing just for funsies. You know, that is like, that is the key drop and a hint thing right there. It was a key drop of hint that I was ignoring, I guess, and then, so then key. before she left, she was like, well, Colleen, Colleen wrote her phone number on the napkin. I was like, "Here, call me." Uh, and she was like, "Oh." She's like, "Okay." So she, she put in her number, and then she's like, "Can I get your number too?" And I was like, "Uh, sure." Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. That's interesting. With a little bit more context, huh? Oh, and Colleen bought us all shots. Which was I don't know what to delicious. make of either one of those <laughs> things. That's that's interesting. It's fifty six dollars for four shots. Yeah. Where were you at? Southern good. Tier. Southern Tier. <laughs> okay, so I thought that they were just beer. They also have. They have a full service bar there. Yes. Well, if you call it that, God, that was. <laughs> Colleen ordered a Long Island iced tea because I prompted her to get something because she wanted alcohol, and I said, "All right, well, you know, get they have a bar here, why not?" So she ordered a, a Long Island iced tea that was the farthest thing from a Long Island iced tea. It was terrible. Really? She drank. Wow. I, I tried a sip of it, and I didn't care for it. Colleen drank like half of it, then she tried giving it back to me, and I took two more sips, and I was like, this can just go away. <laughs> How do you make uh, a Long Island iced tea bad? It was like super lemony. Like, huh. So like a lot of like this, a lot of the mix in there, not yeah, a lot of the booze. A lot of the mix. I've never been to Southern Tier, but I would like to go. Really? You've never been there? You never invite me. Huh. That's yeah, not true. I've you didn't there. invite me I've one time. I've been there many times. <laughs> yeah, no, you go there like every other weekend. Not that often, but. Pretty I, often. I can't afford that, but. I do like going down there, and I was surprised too that their their menu just seemed like it had been scaled back. So Colleen didn't like any of the food there. Oh, they have food too. They have food. Okay, very cool. Unlimited selection. Where is this at again? North Shore. Huh. Wow. Oh, okay. Is it like off the river trail? Would I have ridden my bike past it? 
No, it's a little more in. It's like in from, well, what? So right, the North Shore runs, or the, the what's that trail called? Heritage Trail, you said? Yeah, the River Trail. <laughs> River Trail. River Trail. It runs right by PNC Park, right? Yeah. So if you have to just go in just past the park, it's just on the other side of the park. Oh, really? Yeah. That's like right where, by where I work. It'd go right after work and go there. How did I not know that? Nice. Know. Weird. You should definitely hit it up. I will. Their beer is fantastic. Yes, I, think. I know. Their I beer think is, Southern Tier is one of the... I've had a lot of good Southern Tier beers. That yeah. one, like, salted caramel thing we had the one time that was... Ooh, that was... That was super good. Ooh, mommy! <laughs> <laughs> they know how to do sugary sweet stouts, for sure. Yeah. But um, with all that being said, now it's time for Touching Dots with Tori! Oh, that was your touching thoughty. That was my That's, my dating advice. Or my, that was my just be yourself, my, be my, genuine. Getting Eric to oh, talk I at all. I forgot to do it again. I've been trying to get that in there to the show notes for three for the last two weeks, and now that I'm glad you said that. Get what in? I'm gonna get a picture of Aladdin and Genie as the be yourself. Because I think it's hilarious. I think that's like the best advice you can get. And then getting dating advice from Disney was the whole shtick from two weeks ago when you first asked. And I just keep forgetting. Anyways. And now it's time for <laughs> Touching Thoughts with Tori. Woo! Boy, I, I do love those intros. I really do. So thank you for that. You're welcome. My pleasure. This week, I'm going to hit you with... Maybe uh, maybe you could consider it a parable of sorts. And if, I'm, and if I'm biting off of someone else's, uh, maybe not final thought, but other, you know... IP, feel free to stop me. I don't think so. So imagine in your mind's eye one of them old school saws. You know what I'm talking about. With the wood handle, you know, you work manually back and forth to cut whatever the hell you're cutting. The one man saw, not the a, two a person wood saw. Job. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, they still saw. make them. They're not yeah. that old time. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they are used. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, at any rate. Imagine, if you will, in your mind's eye, one of those things, and now imagine a snake, and the snake's just creeping along doing his thing, and he happens to just get nicked by the edge of of that saw blade, and it and it really pisses him off. This Mr. Snake was having a really bad morning as it was, and he happened to catch this saw blade right on his side. So he got ripped, he got pissed at it, and what he did was, is he wrapped himself around this saw, um, in an effort, I don't know, maybe to hurt the saw or something like that. And obviously you can see where this story's going. Mr. Snake certainly didn't fare that well. So, I don't know, put, you know, maybe let's look at that in a, in a sense where, you know, take a look at what you're fighting at and see if it's worth it or not. You know, sometimes it's better just to walk away. So don't be like Mr. Snake. If it's too much, get out. And there you go. And that'll do it for me. I'm not getting out. I'm going to stay right here, and I'm going to be here next week, and I can't wait to do so, and that'll do it for me. Where did you come up with that story you from? Like that, one. <laughs> <laughs> that was bizarre. <laughs> but it's telling. Right. It's okay. not bizarre. It's, it's, it's interesting, but okay. Uh, cool. Well, yeah, we'll definitely be... Uh, We're at like 82 weeks in. I mean, the, the creat- your creativity is getting a little... Getting a little no, scant. that was very creative. Very That's creative. why I was... Oh. Like, it's life lessons instead of touching thoughts. I thought though. it was... Sage advice. Apt, but yeah. strange and a parable, like you said. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I guess it works, so... I'm trying. Uh, more okay. than me. Way more than me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's... <laughs> damn sure, so... <laughs> Cool. Well, I think that's going to do it for us this week for the Patak Korma Curry Simmer Sauce. We finally crossed that one off Eric's list. And um, without that being said, thank you guys so much for listening. And as always, we will catch you next week. Oh no, it's the end of the show. Thank goodness there are several other episodes waiting just for you. Check out our Instagram. We like to have some fun over there. We post the sauce bottle pics if you're curious and the occasional meme. That's going to be sauce spoken official. Now, you know, despite our humble nature, we are accepting donations, believe it or not. Look us up on PayPal. That's going to be at sauce spoken. Hey, and if you like what you hear, grease those palms, babe. Lastly, roll up your sleeves and get into the nitty gritty at sauce sawspoken.wordpress.com We have show notes and details. Check it out. Share us with a family member or a friend. If you're enjoying it, I'm certain they will too. Good night.